Eta notation isn't like that. If you think it's like that, you're in trouble. You really have to think of what's going on under the theta notation, and it's more of a descriptive notation than it is a manipulative notation. There are manipulations you can do with it, but unless you understand what's really going on under the theta notation, you will find yourself in trouble. Okay, and next time we'll talk a little bit more about theta notation. So is insertion sort fast? Well, it turns out for small n, it's moderately fast. Okay, but it is not at all for large n. Okay. So I'm going to give you an algorithm that's faster. It's called merge sort. I wonder if I should leave insertion sort up. Why not? on this later. Okay? So if you're taking notes, leave some space on the left. Here's merge sort of an array A from 1 up to N. And it's basically three steps. If N equals 1, we're done. Sorting one element, it's already sorted. All right. Okay. So recursive algorithm. Otherwise, what we do is we recursively sort A from 1 up to the ceiling of n over 2. And the array A of the ceiling of n over 2 plus 1 up to n. Okay, so we sort two halves of the, lit, of the uh, input. And then three, we take those two lists that we've done and we merge them. And to do that, we use a merge subroutine, which I'll show you. So the key subroutine here. merge. And it works like this. I have two lists. Let's say one of them is 20. I'm doing this in reverse order. 7, 2. So I've sorted this like this. And then I sort another one. I don't know why I do it this order, but anyway. Okay. And here's my other list. I have my two lists that I've sorted. So this is A1 up to A ceiling of N over 2 and ceiling of n over 2 plus 1 up to a n for the way it will be called in this program. Okay. And now to merge these two, what I want to do is produce a sorted list out of both of them. So what I do is first observe where is the smallest element of any two lists that are already sorted. It's in one of two places, the head of the first list or the head of the second list. So I look at those two elements, and I say, which one is smaller? This one is smaller. So then what I do is I output into my output array the smaller of the two, and I cross it off. And now, where's the next smallest element? And the answer is it's going to be the head of one of these two lists. So then I cross out this guy, put him here, and circle this one. And now I look at these two guys. This one's smaller. I output that and circle that one. Now we look at these two guys, output 9. So every step here is some fixed number of, of operations that's independent of the size of the arrays at each step. OK? 
Okay? Each individual step is just me looking at two elements and picking out the smallest and advancing some pointers into the, into the array so that I know where the current head of that, of that list is. Okay? And so therefore the time is order n on n total elements. The time to actually go through this and merge two lists is order n. We sometimes call this linear time, okay? Because it's not quadratic or whatever. It's proportional to n, okay? Proportional to the input size. So it's linear time. I go through and I just do this simple operation, just working up these lists, and in the end I've done essentially n operations, order n operations, each of which costs constant time. That's a total of order n time. OK? Everybody with me? OK. So, oh, about that. so this is a recursive program. We can actually now write what's called a recurrence for this program. And the way we do that is we say, let's let the time to sort ele n elements be t of n. Then how long does it take to do step one? That's just constant time. Okay, we just check to see if n is 1, and if it is, we return. So that's independent of the size of what anything that we're doing. It just takes a certain number of machine instructions on whatever machine, okay, and we say it's constant time. So we call that theta 1. This is actually a little bit of an abuse, okay, which if you get into it, then the reason is because typically in order to say it, you need to say what it's growing with and Nevertheless, we use this as an abuse of the notation, just to mean it's a constant. Okay? So that's an abuse. Just so people know. Okay? But it simplifies things if I can just write theta 1, and it basically means the same thing. Okay? Now we recursively sort these two things. So how can I describe that if I'm going to recur the time to do this? I can describe as, recursively, as t of ceiling of n over 2 plus t of n minus ceiling of n over 2. That's actually kind of messy. So what we'll do is we'll just be sloppy. Write t of n over 2, 2t of n over 2. Okay, so this is just us being sloppy. And we'll see on Friday in recitation, it's OK to be sloppy. Okay, That's the great thing about algorithms, is you can, as long as you're rigorous and precise, you can be as sloppy as you want. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is sloppy because I didn't worry about what was going on, because it turns out it doesn't make any difference. And we're going to actually see that that's the case. And finally, I have to merge the two sorted lists which have a total of n elements, and we just analyze that using the merge subroutine. That takes us theta n time. So that allows us now to write a recurrence for the performance of merge sort. We should say that t of n is equal to theta 1 if n equals 1, and 2 t of n over 2 plus theta of n if n is bigger than 1. 